Okay, so today is our first video of module two, organic reactions. And we're going to start this off with a brief acid base review. So remember from last semester that we're going to use the Bronsted Lowry definition of acids and bases. So that means for this class, when we're talking about an acid, we are talking about a proton donor. So we're talking about a molecule that can release a proton. Conversely, a base is going to be a proton acceptor, so a molecule that can bind to a free proton. And we're going to describe acid-base chemistry and aqueous solutions in this class using a pair of equations. We're going to use the acid dissociation equation and the base dissociation equation. So the acid dissociation equation is the one shown below, where HA is our acid and A minus is the conjugate base. So it's what's left over of our acid after it has donated or released its proton. So since this is an acid-base reaction, if HA is our acid, in this equation, H2O water has to be acting as our base. So in this reaction, when we place our acid, HA, in water, that proton is going to dissociate, so it's going to be released from the acid. And that proton is going to bind, it's going to be accepted by a water molecule to form the hydronium ion. So as you might remember from the last class, some acids completely dissociate in water, while some barely dissociate. Only a small percentage of the acid molecules will actually donate a proton. So those acids that nearly completely dissociate in water, we refer to as strong acids. And those where only a small percentage dissociate, we refer to as weak acids. And we can quantify this by using a special equilibrium constant, Ka, which stands for the acid dissociation constant. And like all equilibrium constants, it's going to be equal to the concentration of the products divided by the concentrations of the reactants. So one thing you'll notice, we have water as a reactant in this equation, but it's missing from our equilibrium constant equation. That's because equilibrium constant equations only contain concentrations that can change in a meaningful way. So since this occurs in an aqueous solution, this means water is our solvent. So the concentration of water is sky high. So even though some water molecules are going to accept protons from our acid and be converted into the hydronium ion, that's going to be a very, very minute percentage of the total water molecules. So our water concentration is not going to change in a meaningful way. Therefore, we just omit it from the acid dissociation constant equation. Okay, so I want you to pause this video and answer a couple of questions for me before we move forward. I want you to calculate the Ka for an acid where 90% of the molecules dissociate in water. Then I want you to calculate the Ka for an acid where only 10% of the acid molecules dissociate in water. Okay, let's see what you came up with. So let's start by writing the formula for our acid dissociation equation. And if 90% of our acid dissociates, that means 90% will be in the A minus form, and 10% will still be in the HA form at equilibrium. So what about our hydronium ion concentration? Well, if 90% of our acid dissociated, then 90% of them released a proton that was able to bind to water to form hydronium ions. So that means we have 90% hydronium ion as well. Okay, so let's calculate this out. So 90% is the same thing as 0.9. We also have 0.9 hydronium ion as well and we still have 10% HA at equilibrium. So 0 0.9 times 0 0.9 is 0 0.81 divided by 0 
gives us an acid dissociation constant of 8.1. Okay, now let's try this with our weak acid, our acid that only dissociates 10% in water. So we'll rewrite our acid dissociation equation, and this time our values are flip-flop. At equilibrium, we still have 90% of acid, HA, so that means only 10% has donated a proton to water. Okay, let's convert our percentages to decimals and go and plug in our numbers again. So 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 is 0 0.01 divided by 0 0.9, and we get 0 0.011. So the big takeaway I want you to have from all this math is that a strong acid will have a large Ka, and a weak acid will have a very small Ka. Okay, so let's see if we can describe a base in the same way. So we're going to come up with a base dissociation equation to complement our acid dissociation equation. So we're going to symbolize a general base as B. We're going to place our base in water, and that means since we're reacting it with a base this time, our water has to act as the acid. So the water is going to release a proton, so our conjugate base is going to be the hydroxide ion, which is simply water without the proton. And our base is going to accept that proton, giving us our conjugate acid, BH+. Okay, so at this point, I want you to go ahead and pause this video and see if you can come up with an equation for our base dissociation constant. K, B. Okay, so our base dissociation constant is just another equilibrium constant. So it's going to be equal to the concentration of our products divided by the concentration of our reactants. So we're going to have the concentration of hydroxide ions times the concentration of BH+, plus, which is our conjugate acid divided by the concentration of base. Okay, so now let's tie this back into organic chemistry and IUPAC naming. So for the rest of this class, there's three functional groups I want you to think of when you're thinking of acid-base chemistry. We have phenols and carboxylic acids that can act as acids. And we have amines that can act as bases. This is super important. It's going to come up for the rest of the semester, so go ahead and cement that in your mind right now. So go ahead and say it with me. Phenols and carboxylic acids act as acids. Amines act as bases. Okay, so since this is such an important concept and it's going to keep coming up over and over again in this class, we need to know how to name the conjugates of these functional groups that can act as acids or bases. So let's start with phenols. So the conjugate base of a phenol is a phenoxide ion. So take a look at this chemical reaction at the bottom of the slide. So we have a phenol, we place it in water, it's going to dissociate and donate a proton to a water molecule, and we're left with a phenoxide ion and a hydronium ion. So how do we name these phenoxide ions? Well, lucky for you, it's pretty simple. We're just going to take the phenol name and add eight to the end, A-T-E. Okay, so go ahead and pause this video and see if you can name the molecules in this acid dissociation reaction. So we already named the two easy ones, water and hydronium ion. So I want you to give me the name of the two organic molecules. Okay, so let's start with our phenol reactant. So remember, with phenols, we always start numbering at the aromatic carbon containing the hydroxy group. So that means we have a methyl group at position four. So this molecule would be 4-methylphenol. 
Okay, what about our organic product, our conjugate base of our 4-methylphenol? So all we're going to do is take the phenol name, so 4-methylphenol, and we're going to add 8, A-T-E, to the end. So that means the name of this molecule is 4-methylphenolate. Okay, now let's try an example with carboxylic acids. So the conjugate base of a carboxylic acid is called a carboxylate ion. And we're going to name these by taking the carboxylic acid name and replace the oic acid with O8. So let's try an example. So I want you to pause this video and write an acid dissociation equation for the dissociation of propanoic acid in water. Okay, so propanoic acid is a three carbon carboxylic acid. We're gonna place our propanoic acid in water and it's going to dissociate into, into this carboxylate ion right here and our hydronium ion. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video again and see if you can give me a name for our carboxylate ion product. Okay, so remember we're just going to take our carboxylic acid, we're going to drop the oic acid, and replace it with O8. So the name of this carboxylate ion is propanoate or propanoate ion. Okay, and finally let's talk about our organic bases, our amines. So the conjugate acid of an amine is referred to as an ammonium ion or an azanium ion. And these are a little trickier to name. So if we have a single carbon chain attached to the nitrogen, we're just going to list that carbon chain as an alkyl group followed by azanium just as one word. So let me give you an example. So go ahead and pause this video and see if you can give me a name for this ammonium ion. Okay, so the only carbon chain we have attached to our nitrogen is a methyl group. So this molecule would be methyl azanium. Okay, so what if we have two different groups attached to our nitrogen? Well, in that case, we're going to list the two groups in alphabetical order, but we're going to put parentheses around the second alkyl group. So let me give you an example for that as well. So go ahead and pause this video and see if you can give me a name for this azanium ion in green here. Okay, so it looks like we have an ethyl group and a propyl group. So the final name for this ion would be ethyl propyl azanium. Okay, so what if we have three different carbon chains attached to our nitrogen? Well, we're still going to list all three alkyl groups in alphabetical order, and the second one is still going to be in parentheses, and we're still gonna smush it all together as a single word. So let's try one of those examples as well. So go ahead and pause this video and see if you can give me a name for this ion in orange. Okay, so it looks like we have a butyl group, an ethyl group, and a methyl group. So that means this molecule would be called butyl ethyl methyl azanium. Okay, so what if all of our carbon chains coming off of the nitrogen are the same? Well, as you would expect, we're just going to use the di or tri prefix as we always do. So for completeness, let's try one of those examples as well. So go ahead and pause this video and see if you can come up with a name for the azanium ion in purple here. Okay, so it looks like our nitrogen is attached to a pair of propyl groups. So that means the name of this ammonium ion would be dipropyl azanium.